Right. Okay, good evening. Um, welcome to the first mentoring session of the revision section of the, uh, the course. I uh, can't actually see any signs of anybody being online at the moment, but if you are, perhaps you could um, make yourselves known and confirm that you can both uh, hear me and uh, see me. Um, the idea being with these sessions, of course, you should be familiar with this by now from the tuition phase, that it's an opportunity for you to ask whatever questions you've got um, with regard to your preparation for P7 this uh, December, and I will do my level best to deal with any queries uh, that you may have. So, is there, so to speak, anybody out there? <laughs> Yep, okay, good. I've got a couple coming up, so obviously um, it would appear that uh, the system is working as intended. So, um, I mean, basically, fire away, guys. I mean, I hope the preparation is still uh, going well, but if, as I say, if the preparation work you've been doing uh, in recent days has caused any concerns, raised any, a, 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 any queries, let's do what we can to sort them out. Uh, anything at all, I mean, chances are if something that might, might have been bothering you slightly, it may well be concerning other people as well. So um, whatever questions you've got, far away, and as I say, I'll do my best to answer them for you. I mean, at this stage in the game, uh, one thing I would say is the majority of your preparation time, I appreciate that you've got other subjects you may be taking uh, next month as well, so you can't devote it all to uh, P7. Um, as I'm sure other tutors have told you on other subjects, you, your best preparation in these um, later stages of your revision should be question practice, which of course we'll be doing more of on, um, on Friday together. Jackie, Crenal, have you got any, any questions? Nelly, I don't know if your screen's still loading or not. Um, okay, Jackie, you, you say you, you feel that you're weak on the standards and failed in June due to the majority of questions being based on this area. Any advice? Uh, well, as we've said all the way through the tuition phase and with the two um, the revision sessions we've had so far, it is very much a fact of life that in this paper, um, as an auditor, your knowledge of accounting standards is going to be examined. Um, as I've said to you before, in revising your accounting standard knowledge, the things to concentrate on are, as per whatever standard it may be that you're looking at, yeah, what are, take careful note, what are the main principles of valuation? Um, and what are the main disclosure requirements? Because those for the auditor are the key issues that we would be concerned with. In order to answer a question about audit evidence that we would expect to find, perhaps in our review of the working papers, or it might be one of those question requirements where we ask what audit procedures we would adopt in relation to a given item. Uh, or it might be one of those uh, questions, certainly it usually does come up there on the risk question, something we were looking at um, last Friday. Uh, it's a, a, a case of, as a, being aware of what are the principles of valuation and therefore what audit evidence do you expect to find, what procedures do you need to carry out to ensure that the uh, the principles of valuation have been properly applied by the client. Um, in the risk question, um, it's a case of, you know, what should they do according to the relevant standard? And, you know, what are the, the possibilities that they may not have properly uh, uh, applied the standard? Because that would be the cause of um, the risk of material uh, misstatement. Um, 
and that's what certainly audit risk is uh, very much concerned with. I, I think, as with everything, the best advice really is, is practicing as many questions as possible. Uh, I don't know how close you came last time, Jackie, but uh, it's not necessarily just knowledge that may have let you down. Um, it's also, of course, as I've been trying to emphasize in looking at the questions w with you, it, it is, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's the exam technique as, uh, as well. And it's so easy to miss out on what should be easy marks, perhaps. If you don't state obvious points, never assume any knowledge on the part of the examiner. Be fair to them. Be fair to the markers. They can only mark what you actually write down. If you don't write something down, however obvious it may be, or you may think it is, um, if you've not written it down and it's relevant to the required answer, they've got to, they can only assume you, don't, that you haven't written it down because you don't know it. So always make sure that you state what might seem like pretty basic, obvious points. If they're relevant, they're mark-worthy. Um, and the other thing, of course, is take whatever help you can get from the wording of the, the facts that you're given in the question scenario itself, and often also um, from the wording of the requirement. I think we had an example uh, last uh, Friday where, do you remember that question we looked at on the, the Grissom group, and we were concerned with the risks? And we had that exercise, which I got you all to uh, put up your response. I said to you, in the requirement on the audit procedures, what did you see as being the key word? And the key word, you remember, was the classification of the non-controlling investment. So the classification was the key thing. And that's why when we went back to the earlier requirement, the, the, the risk was all about they may, we were told, so that's the help in the question, which you've got to be prepared to think about why she told me that. You're told they'd accounted for it as an associate. In the question, some of the criteria to justify accounting for it as an associate were there. You were told it was a long-term uh, investment. There was the suggestion that they could exert influence. What it didn't actually specifically refer to, so one of the things that you would need to confirm in your audit procedures was the actual size of the shareholding. Was that sufficient to justify classification? Um, so you've got to have the basic knowledge, but you've really got to make uh, a big effort to make full use of the help that's on offer. If you've got 32%, that's quite a way short of the required standard. So um, hopefully you will feel better prepared this time. I don't know what your personal circumstances were. That looks as though it was perhaps a case of a combination of lack of knowledge. Um, if you ain't got that, there's not a lot one can do about it. Um, but also, I think, sadly, a lot of people come a lot closer than that. And I always find it heartbreaking when I talk to students and they say, well, John, yeah, I didn't get through last time. I got, you ask them what they got, and they said, well, I got 49 or 48. That almost certainly is, is down to exam technique. And part of that exam technique could be something as basic as, you know, poor time management. Um, I don't know if that um, helps at all. Question practice is, is the answer, Jackie. Uh, Kunal, can you please run through the audit uh, planning stage? Um, <laughs> right. Could you be a little bit more precise? I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name. Kunal, um, what exactly are you after when you say, can I please run through the audit planning stage? Um, whilst you, you're perhaps typing in response to that quickly, your next question, Jackie, with business risk, can we think of pestle as well? Um, I think read between the lines. Um, yes. 
if you're thinking about in terms of risk assessment, then using your studies from uh, you know, other papers, yeah, look at political, economic, social, etc. Um, yeah, that's a good way of thinking about risks. The one thing I would warn all of you to be very careful on using uh, a useful an acronym such as that um, is don't run through the full range, you know, go through political, go through economics. Because my concern there and the examiner's concern would be that you're going to end up making up risk areas which are not actually clearly suggested by the facts given in the scenario. So it can help your thinking, yes, but remember how often do we read a question requirement and it says using the information provided. This is your only danger if you use that sort of thing pesto as a checklist. Um, you'll be trying to find things to match each of the, the, the letters there um, and you might come up with some ideas but you said read between the, the lines, think outside of the box, whatever you like. You've got to be so, so careful, guys. You must be looking. Um, you must be looking to relate your answers always to the facts in the question. Um, now that you said you couldn't hear me, but uh, is that an issue being resolved? There's not a lot I can do about it. I, I don't know. Um, well, the fact that you were spotting suggests that the, the hearing problem has passed. Uh, Nelly, you're saying, oh, sorry, it was Nelly that's saying you, you couldn't hear. Um, practicing past papers, that's the best way, as I said earlier at this stage. Um, the technical issue, I don't know if you want to try re, what is it, rebooting or, such, or something, reconnecting to see whether that solves the sound problem. Doesn't seem to be an issue for other people. Grinnell, you haven't come back yet um, about your query about the audit planning uh, stage. I'm, I, I'm not sure what exactly it is you're after. Um, audit planning is obviously an essential part of the quality control of an individual audit uh, engagement. Um, usually, question one, which includes you know, the risk uh, evaluation uh, requirement clearly puts us at the planning stage. Planning helps to of course control the conduct of the audit. It helps to en ensure that we focus our attention on the significant areas. It's an important part of the management of the risk process. Remember the three elements of audit risk, there's only one of those that you can control. Um, and that is the detection risk. If you've assessed the inherent risk, the control risk as being high, to have overall for your firm an acceptable level of audit risk, you've got to influence the detection risk. So. If you see those being high risk areas, you've got to make sure that when at the planning stage you are putting together your audit team, you've got people with the right mix and level of knowledge and experience. When it comes to, in the conduct of the audit, assigning tasks to individual staff or you know, members of professional staff, members of the audit team, planning is all about you know, getting it right in terms of the delegation of work. 
It's all about getting it right in terms of the supervision of work. It's all about getting it right at the end of the day in terms of the review of the work. This is why, as I say, it's all to do with quality control. Um, and this is why I've suggested to you as part of your exam technique the planning of your answers rather than just read and then start writing. Spend a bit of time thinking, maybe actually getting an answer planned down because that will help to control the quality of your examination answers in the same way as planning is an essential part of the quality control of an individual audit uh, engagement. You're not likely at P7 as you would have um, at, or used to have uh, at F8. You're not so likely to get a question asking you, you know, what are the objectives of uh, planning. The only time she's ever come anywhere near that in P7 was a past question um, where for about four marks we had to distinguish between audit strategy and audit planning, where the main message she was looking for us to get across was, you know, audit strategy is the big picture. So audit strategy comes first, getting an overall feel for what's going to be involved in that particular uh, audit assignment. Um, the audit planning takes us into the nitty-gritty detail. Um, I don't know whether that, that, that helps you know, with your uh, question. Hopefully it does. Um, question on figures requirements. Uh, I want to know what we're required to... Are we required to just put the amounts out in the answer response? Assume that's e.g. analytical review. Or lay it out in the form is presented in the the question. Uh, can you go through then from Azra? Can I go through the ratio analysis? Uh, yeah, it's a noticeable feature of the exam questions over the last two or three years, in particular. More and more, we have seen the examiner giving us information, not purely through narrative description with the odd figure thrown in here and there, um, but actually giving us more and more information that we're expected to make use of um, in the form of perhaps extracts from financial statements, the draft financial statements, perhaps with comparative figures which immediately tells you, once you've got two lots of figures, um, that you, know, you should be thinking in terms of ratio analysis, which only becomes significant, remember, when you are making a comparison. Um, now, if you're actually, as we have been done, if you're asked to, as part of the planning process, to carry out an initial analytical review. Remember, analytical review is used at all stages of an audit. It must be used at the planning stage. Then the sort of ratios you should be working out, well, the obvious ones, yeah, work out the gross profit rate work out the net profit rate, work out the return on capital employed, work out the interest cover, work out the current ratio, the quick ratio, work out the creditor days, the debtor days, work out the inventory turnover, look at the gearing. These are the basic sort of ratios from which we should be able to pick up areas perhaps where there is an unexpected change. So if there's been an unexpected movement 
in a key ratio that obviously you've got to plan to look into that further to find out, you know, is there a genuine reason for that unexpected change or could it perhaps be the result of some significant error, either clerical or fraudulent. Remember, at the planning stage when you're using your ratio analysis, it can be equally significant if there is an area of expected change which hasn't materialised. One can recall um, a past exam question where, in fact, she told us, remember, for analytical review purposes, you, as always, you look to make use of evidence obtained from a variety of sources. Some of it could be internal, some of it could be external. She actually told us the industry norm. And so we could, from the given information about the, the client, we could work out on this particular ratio what they had achieved and what we were told and never forget the real world out there, there's still an ongoing economic crisis. Some of the politicians, the governors of banks would have us believe things are improving, albeit slowly. But there's still a lot of economic problems out there. But if you're actually told in the question that the average, let's say, I can't remember the precise thing it was, but let's say the average increase in revenues for the period, for the industry, the industry average was 20%. And you look at the client that you've been given and the figures you've been provided, and you see they've gone up by 25%. That's a significant difference between the industry average and what is being shown by the client. Now, we'd have to plan to look at that very carefully. It might be, and I think there were clues to this effect if you read elsewhere in the scenario, um, that it could have been a problem with regard to revenue recognition. They were perhaps recognising their revenue too early and that's why they were going against the industry trend and showing a 5% higher increase than everybody else. So, you don't want to, if you are, as we have been, you don't want to just go on calculating ratios uh, and so on for, for the sake of it. As always, you've got to look at the question requirements, you've got to look at the marks on offer, and set yourself a realistic achievable target. Provided you've got a reasonable mix of ratios, and you are then interpreting the results of your calculations, which, remember, you must clearly show in your answer, um, then you, know, you may not come up with as many ratios, as many uh, comments as a published examiner's or tutor's answer, but you'll have enough to get a pass mark. Because I've said to you before, examiner's answers, tutor's answers tend to be much longer uh, than what is necessary to get full marks, they'll earn a pass mark in the exam. Um, so you don't want to go overboard, but yeah, you have got to be prepared. If figures are given anywhere in the scenario, please, please don't ignore them. They're there to be used in a sensible way to help you get more relevant depth in your answers and therefore get more marks. I've said to you on more than one occasion, with this examiner, no red herrings. All right? She puts something in a scenario, you've got to be reading it, thinking about it, saying, OK, Lisa, I know you've told me this for a reason, and I'm going to think about it and come up with a sensible comment as to what that reason might be in relation to the given question requirement. The last comment that went up there, I can see Ed Rama, you're saying um, you can't hear me half the time, uh, as I think it was Nelly, was it earlier, got a hearing problem. I can only suggest you, you, you reboot. 
might be a problem with your system. Um, Ed Robert, you're asking how about current issues in IT. Um, current issue, I think the most likely candidate uh, would be to ask you, um, as per the recent articles, we don't know it's who actually voted because they've gone anonymous on us over the last few months. It's from the P7 uh, team, but it reads to me very much as though it was written by Lisa Weaver. And that is with the proposed amendments to the form and content of the audit report on annual financial statements. Um, trying harder than we have done in the past, perhaps in order to reduce some of the criticism levelled at the profession, um, to bridge that expectation gap that we're always referring to. Um, the timing of the uh, article, I think, it is such. I would be very, very surprised if, if it doesn't come up next month, it almost certainly would come up uh, next June. I think there's a good chance it could come up in uh, December. Um, so that is the most obvious candidate, I think, um, for a topical issue, uh, a current issue. Um, IT, frequently we found scenarios with regard to risk evaluation. She has introduced the suggestion um, that Perhaps the company has recently started perhaps to generate sales for the first time online. Or she tells us a significant amount has been spent on upgrading their online uh, computer systems. Uh, so this has featured quite a lot. Uh, not surprisingly, because it's something which very frequently crops up in practice. So, yeah, you need to have thought about the risks that are associated with one of your clients being involved uh, in e-commerce activities. Um, do I think analytical, again, is sitting as it was tested last uh, time? Well, Jackie says, do you think it will be analytical again? As we're coming up with a comment, that was tested last time. So what? Nothing to prevent it being uh, tested again this time. You look at some of the examiner's reports in recent years, um, they've commented on their concern about candidates' question spotting. Not just candidates. In fairness, they've criticised perhaps tutors for doing the same thing. It would be very, very dangerous to look at on whatever subjects you're taking this time, to look at what came last time and say, ah, oh, right, okay, well, I, yeah, I don't need to bother preparing that then because it came last time. As a matter, I think, of deliberate policy, the examiners nowadays are you know, setting something in successive papers with the intention of catching out people who are trying to question spot. So you can't rule anything out in your preparation. You've got to enter that exam room with the attitude, come on, Lisa, set whatever you like, I don't care. Provided it's in the syllabus, I'm going to pass. Remembering that you know, a positive attitude is an important part of your exam technique. And remember, some things like risk evaluation, we don't know what type of risk, business, risk of material misstatement, audit risk as a whole. We don't know which one will come up. We know it's very likely it will come up. We know that ethics, one way or another, comes up every time. We know that audit reports comes up every time. Um, some things don't come up every time. Some come up on a regular basis, such as putting us in a group audit situation. Analytical procedures come up on a regular basis and sometimes in successive exams. So please, don't think about trying to question spot. Aim at getting yourself in a position, as I say, where you hit that exam room and you're confident whatever comes up, you're going to be happy 
that you can cope with it. Question spotting, very, very dangerous practice. Um, okay, well, actually, that uh, takes us to the... Um, the end of the thing. Adrama, you just come in with a, a question right at the end there. Can I advise how best to tackle a question that asks matters to consider and principles audit procedures to perform? Um, I think that's one of the things we're going to be looking at on Friday evening, actually. Um, from memory, that's one of the things that comes up on Friday. If it doesn't, I will certainly make sure that I, I, I do cover that. Okay. Well, Good to be with you again. Um, hope that uh, helped and uh, hopefully we'll all get together um, again on Friday evening. All right. Enjoy Wednesday, Thursday. See you Friday. All right. Take care.